So this is one of the longer of the uh, of the lectures. What I'm going to do is go through some of the um, membrane bound organelles. So one of the things, the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic is prokaryotic cells do not have any membrane bound organelles. Um, they have the enzymes and all those things to do what they need to do inside them, but they're not placed in any kind of structure, whereas eukaryotic cells have that. So what I would like to do with this video is kind of walk through very quickly on kind of the parts, um, try to make it pretty simple. And so, uh, well, this, you know, here again, I'm, I'm showing you plant and animal cells and we can, we can come back to those, but, uh, um, uh, how, how they differ toward the end. Okay, so um, what we want to do is go through the parts, and I'm not going to read all this to you, um, so you, you can kind of look this over, uh, but what I want you to know, the nucleus is, is really kind of the brains of the cell. If you're in my wife's third grade class, uh, that works. It, it kind of controls everything that's going on in the cell. Uh, this is where the DNA is located. Um, uh, I do want you to, to notice spelling because spelling will count. You have chromosomes, um, you know, chromatin. Uh, these are going to become important later when we do mitosis, meiosis. Uh, your DNA is actually in the form of chromatin most of the time, uh, uncondensed chromosomes. Uh, uh, your, your, your DNA is all kind of spread out. Um, and what happens is during mitosis, all that will bunch together, it'll condense, it'll wrap around what we call histone proteins and become chromosomes. So, so really 90% of your uh, cells right now do not have technically chromosomes in the sense of these solid structures we show you during mitosis. Um, it's usually in the form of chromatin. Um, and then the other thing I want you to realize coming down here is the nucleolus, different from the nucleus. Um, so be able to tell those apart. The nucleolus is inside. Uh, you can have one or more. Uh, here they're only showing you one, but there could be two or three even. And the nucleolus is uh, produces RNA. And so that's where um, uh, our RNA, ribosomal RNA, that's where ribosomes will eventually be made from, is from that RNA. So I want you to know that term. Okay, so that's that's the nucleus in a nutshell. Uh, the next one are ribosomes. And notice that I mentioned that prokaryotic cells do not have membrane bound organelles. So what that tells you is prokaryotic cells have ribosomes. Well, well what you need to know is these do not have any membranes on the outside. Uh, um, and so what you should know is they're made up of our RNA, which is ribosomal RNA and, and protein and uh, not membrane bound. And so they're a large and a sub, small subunit. They come together during protein synthesis. We'll talk about that a bit later for, uh, for test number two. And they have one function, and that is to make proteins. Uh, and there's two different types, free and bound. The free are floating freely, <laughs> obviously. And then the bound are actually attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, which we will talk about shortly. All right, so the endoplasmic reticulum, um, uh, there's two types, rough and smooth. And so we'll start with the rough one. These are the ones with the bound ribosomes. This is, uh, uh, so there are extensive networks of membranes. Um, they contain cisternae, which are, uh, the you know, cistern is something that holds a liquid. And really is, they got the protein, so they're, they're producing proteins. They're usually um, secreting glycoproteins, and then they will be placed into vesicles. And so one of the major functions of the rough endoplasmic reticulum is to produce more membranes for the cell. Uh, the, sm the smooth ER, on the other hand, a little bit different, um, is they're lacking the ribosomes. That's why under the microscope, they, they, they look smooth. So they're, they're not making membranes. Um, and the reason is they can't make membranes because part of the membranes have proteins in them and they can't make proteins. Uh, so what they do is they synthesize lipids. So they will make lipids. They metabolize carbohydrates so they can break those down. Um, they will actually detoxify the cell. So this is where they break down any toxins. And they also store calcium ions. Um, so Think about you know what what organs would probably have cells that have large amounts of 
smoothie are, you, you think things like liver, because the liver is detoxifying the body. Uh, so those cells would, would, would obviously have more smoothie R than maybe most. So kind of give you a concept there. Uh, Golgi apparatus. Um, in the third grade class, this would be the <laughs> warehouse of the cell. Um, this is basically where things are modified, stored, and shipped. Uh, those things are typically not, but not inclusive uh, proteins. Um, so what happens is there's, uh, so starting on these, there's two faces, the cis face and the trans face. Um, and the cis face is usually near the ER, and, and this is accepting the glycoproteins that are being made from, from the, the rough ER. And then it goes through, it can sit in there for a while. Uh, those proteins can be actually modified and changed. And then on the trans face, they come off uh, and, and butt off and ship out into something else. So I want you to know the system for trans face that different have uh, different parts to it. So. All right. The next one is the lysosomes, and these are kind of considered like the stomach of the cell. They are hydrolytic enzymes, uh, acidic enzymes that break down food. Uh, they fuse with food vacuoles uh, for digestion, and phagocytosis means to eat, and we'll talk about that term more. Um, they recycle organic material. If you have organelles and things that are not working properly, you have autophagy, where uh, basically the lysosomes will break those components down to reuse. And then apoptosis um, uh, basically plans cell destruction. Uh, there are times throughout our system uh, where um, cells need to be destroyed and basically it opens up all its lysosomes. Uh, they're programmed to just kind of explode and digest from the inside out, um, shut things down. And uh, an example of that, and we'll see this more, but an example of that would be uh, at one time uh, when your hands were developing, um, uh, you had actually cells in between your digits. And as the digits got longer, those cells actually uh, went through a planned cell destruction, little, little cell suicides. All right, and then we have vacuoles and vesicles. Um, and your book kind of separates them out. I'm going to tell you, so I did here, but I'm going to tell you often they're used interchangeably. Uh, vacuoles are usually larger and do not fuse with membranes regularly, although they will. So again, you got to be careful. Um, but, but there are food vacuoles that often hold food and then they'll fuse with lysosomes. Uh, you have contractile vacuoles, which will actually uh, manage water. Uh, you will see these in things like paramecium. Um, and I think we saw that in that earlier video I showed you where uh, you'll, you'll see this contractile vacuole go like this to pump water out. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And then in plants, you have a central vacuole and that will hold large amounts of water and keeps plant cells, gives them their shape. And I want you to know the term tonoplast. That is the actual membrane on the cell uh, central vacuole called a tonoplast. And then vesicles are usually smaller and, and will usually fuse with, with other things. And, and they're obviously used for, for moving things around. Uh, carrying um, um, neurotransmitters or carrying some kind of uh, light GAN, some kind of messenger. So all kinds of different things. But those. And then the, the last thing on here is the endomembrane system. Um, very interesting, you know, uh, uh, we call the nucleus the brain of the cell. And then the idea was, well, how the hell does the nucleus know what's going on? You know, it's inside the middle of the cell. How does it know what's going on in the cell? How does it know what's going on outside the cell? And so somebody came up with this idea of this endomembrane system where all the things are kind of connected and transferring information and going through these membranes. Uh, so what I want you to know, the parts of the endomembrane system from outside to inside, and again, it varies a little bit, but kind of gives you an idea. It goes from the nucleus with the nuclear membrane to the... Um, to the uh, smooth ER, and then you have the rough uh, ER, uh, Golgi apparatus, uh, vesicles, lysosomes, and uh, the plasma membrane. So again, it, again, it doesn't really matter the order, but you have the nucleus, the rough ER, smooth ER, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and, and, and uh, vesicles and vacuoles. Uh, so all these things with membranes are considered part of this endomembrane system. 
something. And, and if I ask you what the endomembrane system does, it's really about communication. Communication. Uh, so the last thing I want to do is go all the way back to the very beginning of this um, and look at these two cells and talk about how plant and animal cells are different. If we're going to go with those two, uh, how you tell them apart. And if you, it, it, what always is amazes me is when we do this, um, it's always what what, what plant uh, animal cells don't have. So I'm going to flip and we'll start with plant cells. How can you tell a plant cell? Well, they one they have a cell wall with um, peptide of lichen. Uh, number two, they have a large central vacuole. Um, and then number three, a structure we haven't talked about, it'll be in another taping, which would be the chloroplast. So that would be how you would tell a plant cell. Um, how do you tell an animal cell? Um, animal cells have, uh, they don't have a cell wall. <laughs> they don't have chloroplasts. Um, what you will notice though, uh, what they do have is they have, um, I'm looking for it on here. I, I, okay, so here's the key right here. Um, centrosomes or centrioles. Uh, this is what um, in the animal cell will have, a uh, plant cell does not. And I'm not sure it says that on there, but yeah, so centrioles there. Uh, um, but plant cells do have lysosomes. I don't like that, that should be, they have very few of them, but there are plant cells with lysosomes. So uh, that I don't believe is correct. All right, so we'll, we'll go through and we'll stop with that. But 